in five seconds, four seconds, three, two, one. Okay, so we're going to start. So what I plan to do is uh, actually find out from you, because this, this shouldn't really just be about like me telling you what I think. I want to find out what your ideas are. But I'm going to start with some of my ideas, first of all. So this is about how we can engage moms and sons, dads and daughters into computer science using this special little platform, the Raspberry Pi. So I want to develop your understanding of what a Raspberry Jam is and think about who attends them, because you, you're being at one today, find out why they're so popular. Where can you find them when they take place and how do you go about holding your own Raspberry Jam? So who in the room, who actually owns a Raspberry Pi? Just show us. Lots of you do, okay? The next question then is, what have you done with your Raspberry Pi? Uh, what have you done with yours? It all, got it Ooh. <laughs> what have you done with yours? Um, You've web, done something with it, right? Web, web server, okay. security appliance. Well, a lot of the times when I go around, people tell me teachers, because I'm doing a lot of training with teachers in the country, and they tell me, it's still in the box, I still haven't done anything with it yet. And then the other thing is, they said, well, I got it, and it's just a circuit board, I don't really know what to do with it exactly. So. The, the idea of JAMS is to help people to figure out exactly what you can do with a Raspberry Pi, because and, 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 that's what it's about. And there's a lot of people here today that would already maybe have got a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone or some other device, wherever it was, and they'd be doing this kind of thing. Now, my slides keep auto advancing. I haven't figured out. I've just stopped them from doing that. So, uh, so we all know what a Raspberry Pi is here, pretty much. And um, one of my favorite things is this sort of battle here between creators and consumers. People talk about consumer electronic devices. Is the Raspberry Pi a consumer electronic device? What do you think? I'll just pause there for five seconds, because Hamish, Hamish is doing this, he's not sure. I'm gonna pause for five seconds, and what I want you to do is I want you to think, is it a consumer device? And then see what the person next to you says. So you'll have to turn around though, and then say hello to Paul. Okay, so. Can I hear you talking for a few seconds? Can you talk to Les, please? Yeah. Yeah. Is it a consumer device? So, three seconds left, two, one. And Andy, could you tell me, what do you think? I don't, I don't think it's a consumer device. I think it's, it's got consumer, the consumer market's picked it up, but it's not a consumer device in its initial design. You don't think it's a consumer device. What about you, Jason? Uh, we've decided it depends on its use. Right. So we, the society we live in today, we live in a convenient world where everything comes to us. These slides are just going to keep randomly spinning around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Choose a slide, pick a slide, any slide. Um, we, live, we like the idea that we buy something from the supermarket, we stick in the microwave, and two minutes later our food is ready. We like the idea that we can just press an app, and that program, so we press a button. That program that we missed last night, the last episode, we can just watch it whenever we want. We like life to be convenient. We like our houses to be warm. So when you, when you say to a teacher, I want you to stop everything that you're doing, and you know how you're worried about GCSE results and Ofsted inspections, all these kinds of things. I want you to stop all of those worries, and I'm going to give you this little circuit board thing. I want you to change everything that you're doing. A lot of teachers go, no, 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 I don't want to do that, because they like comfort. They like those slippers that they've been wearing for the last four years that have got holes in and all the rest. Because, be, to be honest, we all like being in our comfort zone. And the Raspberry Pi gets us out of our comfort zone, and it shows us how we can be creatives. So the aim of a Raspberry Jam is, is to inspire and engage people of all ages. Now, you today don't look like the sort of typical audience that I see at the Raspberry Jams that I go to. We generally get... Mums and sons, dads and daughters, people of all ages. Yeah, okay, I don't do that. <laughs> and it's to figure out the potential of the Raspberry Pi. It's all run by volunteers. Great volunteers like like Ben Luxall. Let's hear it for Ben Luxall. Yeah. Yeah. He's downstairs, so we have to shout a bit louder. Let's hear it for Ben Luxall. Yeah. So you'll say, what was all that noise? And he'll say, it's that Alan, he's mad as a box of frogs. So, but they're driven by, by value. A lot of people said to me, Alan, this, this is a great idea, this Raspberry Jam thing, you can make a fortune out of it. No, I wasn't planning to make money. And, um, I mean, it'd be handy if I did make some money, because I could buy some more Raspberry Pis and stuff. But it's all about the experience. And I want high quality experiences. Some people have been to Raspberry Jams, and they said, drove all the way from Cambridge over to mm -mm, place. And when I got there, 
it was just like three people, they hadn't really thought about what they were going to do, they hadn't thought about where we were going to park and all that kind of thing. So I want to try and make sure that it's a high quality experience for people. And well, it's fantastic that you've got things like YouTube and you've got all these tutorials online that people can follow. When you actually sit down next to somebody and go, you made that. Wow, that's incredible. That actually feels a lot better than somebody retweeting something that you said or, or whatever. I'm starting to feel like this haunting message is coming. But people do say to me, I am as mad as a box of frogs. And Liz, Liz said something one day about, something, what did she say, like a toddler on caffeine or something like that? Uh, I can't remember. Um, and people say, how on earth do you find all the time to do all this stuff? It's that easy because this is the best job I've got ever in my life. And it's just, it's just fantastic. It's just, every day feels like Christmas Day. So I'm on a mission. I want to help engage the digital makers of tomorrow, make these events freely accessible. Like Robert in Wales who said to me, I can't get to Cambridge. I'm 15. I don't drive a car. My mum and dad, we live in Wales. It's like hundreds of miles away. Can we have one in my front place? Yeah, go ahead and do it. Ryan, who's, who's been here today, he's held, he held a Raspberry Jam in Stevenage and, and he just went ahead and did it. There's all the kind of people that go, mums, sons, dads, daughters, teachers. And the teachers go there. They say, this is great because I can try things out here. And I don't have to worry about somebody coming in with a clipboard and going, um, you're, you're not supposed to be teaching that because they don't understand what you're doing. So, uh, and also now they're paying teachers by results. So if you don't get the right sort of number of results, then so you're not really going to want to take risks. So, um, so there was a buy-in frenzy around the whole of the Raspberry Pi thing, but people are still not really understanding it. You guys and you girls and all the people here pretty much understand, because that's why you're here. But really, I want to get different people to come to Raspberry Jams. People like her over there, she might have not chosen to come here on her own. Yeah, we're talking about you. <laughs> but, but sometimes dads drag along their daughters, a bit like cod liver oil. Here, have some of this daughter, it'll be really good for you. And sometimes sons drag their mums along. And you can have them anywhere, give them a space. If it's got a roof on, that's good, because in this weather we get lots of rain, so it keeps you dry when you're in your pie. And um, they can take place anytime. So, so Manchester, you have one every month. In Preston, we have one every month. But we started now having them every week. Why do we have to wait a month till the next one? Yeah, so let's get lots of students from the university. Let's, let's maybe take a bit of money off people, a bit like a ballet class, and then pay students to run these. Yeah, that's a great idea. So, um, right, once you need to hold your own one, we really need people, a venue, you need to let people know it's happening. But get feedback afterwards, because if your first one's a bit rubbish, then you can run them again afterwards. Um, improvements. Right. The, all these slides that keep that are automatically advanced themselves are un available online for have a look at. Now, I'm going to get rid of all this for a minute because I want to ask you some questions now. So, we're having an amazing event in January. No. In February, yes. At the very end of February. It's the 27th and the 28th. And it's in Manchester. It's two days. Now, if you go to school, it's going to be tough for you to get out of school to go to it. So it's really meant for teachers, and I'm hoping that lots of teachers will come along. And if you're in a school and you know a teacher, say to the teacher, you should go along to this, because it's to help teachers understand what you can do. And we've got all sorts of great people coming along with ideas, to, like Craig has said he's going to come along and show what he can do with the Pi edition of Minecraft. But then on a Saturday and a Sunday, I want it to be the biggest jam we ever had, the biggest jam on the planet, because we're going to link up with the jam that we have in Melbourne and Sydney and Singapore and Silicon Valley and the one we had in Oslo and Botswana, all, all of those raspberry jams everywhere on the planet, all to link up. It, it's going to be exciting, honestly, it is. You just sat there kind of going, oh, I've, I've waited all afternoon to hear about this. No, I was but, thinking about the box of frogs. Oh, yeah, I am, I am definitely. But it's just going to be amazing. It means if you've never held a raspberry jam before, you know, if you think, well, Nobody's ever had one at my school or, or you know, at the petrol station where I work. We'll, we'll go ahead and have one and see what happens. What, all you need is, you could have a Raspberry Pi. You can have a Raspberry Jam without a Raspberry Pi. It's not as easy to have one, but you, but you can. Now, I want to look, I brought a brand new flipboard along today. I bought it on the way here, and it's empty. And I want to fill it with things. Because what I want you to do for a moment is, I want you to imagine we're in Manchester. Are you with me? So we're, we're imagine we're in Manchester. And the time, it's not November, it's February. And you're in this space. 
and it's a nice space, and there's all the nice smells, and you hear lots of buzzing and noise, and people going, oh wow, this is great, this is great. And you're at the Jamboree, and it's either the Thursday or the Friday, and I want you to think, what kind of things can you see around you? What kind of things are you feeling? It's making you think, wow, this event really is good. This is, this is really worth coming to. And now what I'd like to do is to stop thinking about it and just tell the people who you sat next to. So we've got three people there, two there, two there, two there, two, two. Just for a minute, what do you think you would expect to see if this Raspberry Jamboree that's going to make it the best thing that people are talking about for a year afterwards? Right, you've got a minute. <laughs> just thinking, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember when the deadline for the other two was one of the ten thousand. About thirty seconds left. No, I said you've got 30 seconds left. Come on. <laughs> this is supposed to be like Generation Game. Come on. Um, his and hers towels, uh, coffee maker. Come on. All the things that are going to make this event the best event ever. <laughs> Pizza. I got about 10 seconds left. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's get your ideas. So, we're going to find out what was the best idea that your team had, or your group. I'm going to write it down on here. I'm going to share it with all the people who are watching out there. Oh, hello, we've got, oh, we've got two viewers. Live. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we've got three. Okay, so they're all cheering at them. So, your best idea, what we're going to see at the Jamboree? Uh, people going from knowing nothing to knowing something. Ah, progress. Okay. See, it's good for the teacher, because they understand that. You thought I was going to miss you out. No. Best yeah, idea? We challenges. So challenges for people to do this. Oh, I just said challenges. Challenges. Like sandwiches for <laughs> jam on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, we'll write that on there as well. But competition, challenges. Jamwiches. <laughs> and challenges. Now, I like that. So you could say, like, so yeah, you've you got. You win a jamwich if you win a jamwich. <laughs> ah! Solve the challenge to win a jamwich. Okay. And it could be something like, so, right, you've got an hour, you've got to get, get into four or five people together, you've got to go and, you know, okay, probably today you're not going to send your Raspberry Pi up into space or near space, but here's a helium balloon, here's a couple of bits of gaffer tape, you tell them to stop talking. You want me to talk into the microphone? Yeah, that would be okay. <laughs> So I need the microphone. It's so, if you want to yeah, so we'll, we'll get lots of teams together working in challenges. Your best idea? Um, having pies on the show so people can, people who haven't used the pie before can actually get Like you're dropping in space with yeah. loads of stuff and there should be no barriers. Or should there be barriers? Should there be challenges? <laughs> That's a good one, okay? So kit, yeah? So that people can just go and handle stuff and, and go, ah, oh, what's that? Why have you got this? What's, what's this thing for? All that kind of stuff. Yeah? yeah. Techno kit. Yeah, okay. What was your best idea for the Jamboree? Uh, Newbury yeah. area, because I'm, I'm a Newbury and I've been to there and I heard someone say, controlling your fridge or <laughs> doing something with your fridge with your Raspberry Pi, how is that? Work? How yeah, are things okay. today which I'd like to learn more of? And, and like answers to questions. Yes. Yeah? So you could have like a wall where you'd write a question on it and stick it on the wall and then like, like on one of these things and then loads of people come and ask it. Yeah? Like no question too stupid. Right. <laughs> yeah? So questions. Okay, so I'll, we'll, I'll just put one word answers down for now, but we can fill them in later. Yeah? Teaching materials. Yeah, teaching materials. 
So like, like a book that shows you how to use Minecraft on the Raspberry Pi or something like that. <laughs> okay. Something that teachers can take away, something that... The ah, take can away use. resources. Yeah. To justify the time off school so you can say... Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, like, if we could get like a 15-year-old girl to come along and talk about something that would make people think, "Gosh, what a 15-year-old girl did that!" Oh my goodness, I've got to up my game a little bit. Some kind of that inspiration. Um, if you had like little kits, pretty simple projects you could build down. Then, if you didn't have any ideas. So, somewhere between kits and noobs, you want like easy little takeaway things, yeah? Easy, easy to do. Yeah. Graded in difficulty, so you could have like. Here, if you're a beginner. Here, if you're advanced. If you're in the middle, try to figure out where you are. Yeah. Any more ideas we've left out? What were the best ideas? Oh, so yeah. So as they're going around, they can go. Oh, no, we're in the wrong space here. Like that sort of thing. Like a guide where they can circle things. Yeah. Okay, so we can like, I'll put a circle around guide. Okay. Right, have we left? Is that everything? Do you think we've got all the best ideas out? I'm sort of sorry to again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. There's a link to that. Something to try and get people to go to areas they wouldn't necessarily normally go to. Ah. Do you mean like Michelle things? Like, you go with you and you're free after time. Something Like recipe. There, there are 20 small little pies numbered, just pictures of pie around the room. And if they can write down the location of all of those, then you will have a challenge. Ah. Huge, Treasure trail. Exactly. Ah, and okay. Have a geocache in the event. <laughs> it, this, is, this is mainly for teachers, okay? <laughs> Treasure trail, okay? Treasure trail, okay. <laughs> So are we done on the jamboree? Can we? You could have like stamp cards so that say they can take the Minecraft town if they get a stamp from it. And then like orienteering. Yeah. 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 They could like they could have a like a, an app on the Raspberry Pi that might point which direction to go or something. Oh, okay. But kids are getting rewards as they go along. They sometimes forget they're actually ah. learning. <laughs> okay. So rewards <laughs> with the treasure trail. Challenges. Yeah, so every time they get to a station, they get like a little jamwich triangle, and when they get a full set, then they've got a full jamwich. Great, okay. Now, that's, that's for the jamboree. Now I need your help with something else. So, imagine there's lots of people who maybe... So, oh, I've got one viewer now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm talking for too long or something, but I want your help. So, um, imagine we've got one viewer now watching this live online. I hope it's not me. And the one viewer. And this one viewer is thinking, actually, okay, this guy does sound a bit crazy and a bit mad. But you know what? Maybe maybe the scout group that I lead or the brownies or something like that, maybe we could have a raspberry jam on that Saturday, Sunday, get lots of parents to come along and you know, maybe there's some parents or engineers. How do we go about organising it? Now on the Raspberry Jam site we have a little guide that tells you how to do it, but I'm planning at the moment I'm writing the Raspberry Jam Mule, which is the as Ben said before, when they call it the Jamifesto. It, it explains like how to organise a Raspberry Jam, what you need to do. I want you to think now, if you were if this was the Raspberry Jamifesto or the Raspberry Jam you want, and you were looking through it now, what kind of things would you, if you were organising a jam, need to know about? What kind of questions? What kind of topics? How do you think it would be structured? I mean it could be like every time you get through something, get a reward and, and, and something like that. that. I don't know. But could you spend a few moments now with discuss with the person next to you? What ingredients are going to make for a good jam meal? Yeah, Ben, let's have to think about it first before he actually says what you're Thirty seconds left. <laughs> <laughs>
Ten seconds left. They couldn't think of any ideas. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, now this time we're going to start from the back of the room. So, what kind of things are we going to see? What's the, the contest that you think we're going to see in our Raspberry Jam anymore? Jason, have you ever organised a Raspberry Jam before? No. What's the first thing you would need help or guidance with before you anything need, else? You need people who actually know what to do with the part. So the ah, so you need some expertise. Yes. So people who've got, so experts, yeah. or you could call them pioneers. No. No. Okay. <laughs> so you just call them experts. Actually, I've got a little book of puns here. If you just name something, I'll just flick to the right page. So, something else? So, the, the kit, where you, I mean here, people have brought the stuff together. And okay. There's also lots of stuff already here. There's quite a few, few monitors downstairs. Right. How would you organise that? Ah, so. You need to be at a school or something where they have these things. So organising kits, because yeah, there's, there's, wherever you are, there's different, like the one we have in Preston, we've got all screens on the wall that are permanently attached, well kind of permanently attached, they wait until somebody decides to take one out. But, but kit, like, like how do you organise the kit, yeah, like what are these things and what do you do, okay? Um, a list of problems, common problems that you've encountered in the past and how to get over them. Okay, so like case studies or something like that, yeah, so, so problems that you may encounter, like, so we had at one of the events, somebody came along and they said, um, it, I thought it was going to tell, teach me everything about the Raspberry Pi, and they haven't actually mis misread what it said on it. Yeah, that sort of thing. So, problems uh, and solutions. Okay. Anything else? How to publicize? How to publicize? Publicity. How do you get. Now, sometimes people don't want to be, them to be too public to begin with because they only want like a handful of people to come and then and then 300 people turn up and they think, well, oh, <laughs> something went wrong then. We only wanted a few people so to come. Is it enough to um, you know, uh, treat it and start from people? Hire people from it. Yeah. But how do the teachers? Yeah, so, so get the message. How do you get the message out? Get, I, sh I should be using an assistant to write. So, because I'm trying, can you see what I'm trying to do? You try to write sideways, and it's not very easy getting the message out. You also need to know your target a little bit, you know, the type of people you're specifically aiming for. So, so I've, like, why and who are the questions? Yeah. Why are you doing this thing? Oh, well, because I want to know what I can do with a Raspberry Pi. So is it actually organise an event? That's actually what happened with me. I organised the very first Raspberry Jam because I just wanted to know what I could do with it. In the end, I still didn't figure out. All I figured out was how to organise an event from doing that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Shall we leave it there, or have you thought of something else? Okay. Now. Ideas for sponsorship. Ah, yeah, yeah. So fundraising. Fund yeah, fundraising. Now, actually, to my knowledge, most of the events that we've had, people have never actually needed funding because... It's either a school or a charity or an organisation or business just lends their premises that you can use. Because, like, like the Museum of Science and Industry, if I say to them, "Well, I'm going to bring 300 people in, mums and sons, dads and daughters, all on a Saturday, and we'll discover things about science," well, I'm actually helping them do what the, what they're trying to do. Right now, I'm going to give you an option now, which is I can stop talking and that can be the end, or if you want, we can play a few little games to do with the Raspberry Pi. You, you, you're waving your watch, you want me to stop? Mm. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah that's cute. Yeah. Well, what does everyone else want to do? Let's put it to the vote. So, all the people in favour put it to the vote. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, I was just going to tell you a little thing about sabotage, but you probably don't really know it now. So, shall I I'll stop? I'll say thank you very much for listening. No, go on, talk about sabotage. You sabotage you talking about sabotage. Yeah, that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Oh, I see. Okay, so I'm going to go and tell you about sabotage anyway. So, you know how we live in this society where like everything is really convenient, you just switch it on and it works straight away. A lot of the reason why people don't get the Raspberry Pi is because it just doesn't do that. You don't take it out of the box, just plug it in and it works straight away. There's all these problems and challenges. So when I was, I was in Dubai last week 
And I arrived with basically a suitcase, and I didn't bring all the equipment with me, because they said they've got all the equipment. And I thought, well, I really hope they have, because if we turn up, because they were expecting such a five or six hundred people to come to this event and they haven't got the right equipment it's going to cause problems so when we got there they said right there you go it's all in a box there uh, so i thought actually there's a lot of value in getting the raspberry pi I just plugged it in and switched on and everything some of the events that we ran in the evaluation people said afterwards um, it could be better if next time the raspberry pi is what we switched on when we got there and i thought but you're not really getting what the raspberry jams are all about because the raspberry jam is to sort of show you and expose what the raspberry pi is so we play a little game called sabotage. And the way sabotage works is, we start off by saying, if you were going to make an apple pie or a chicken pie, what are the kind of things you would need? So what, what would you say is the most important ingredient for chicken pie? Flour. Flour. Now, I'm impressed with your answer. Because, because some people might have said, you just go to a supermarket and buy one, where you're like, we're going to get seed, we're going to go out, we're going to plant the seed, and then we're going to come back in a few months and we're going to water the seed and all that kind of stuff. So your Raspberry Pi is right up your street, isn't it? But what if we were a bit lazy and we didn't have a lot of time, we're going to make an apple pie. Jack, most important ingredient to make apple pie? Apple. Apple? Okay, that's, that's a bit of an So then what we did with the class was, I said to them, right, imagine you're going to make a Raspberry Pi. It's, we're not going to eat it because it didn't have an E on the end. Um, what do we need? So they all put their hands up and they told me lots of different things. You've got 10 seconds, figure out what were the things that they told me that they were going to need to make a Raspberry Pi. 10 seconds, discuss with your partner. They were able to give me five different answers. And I can't even hear you discuss one. Come on, these were, these were six and seven year old children. Yeah? To make a Raspberry Pi work, you need lots of ingredients. Five seconds, four, three, Two, one, hour stop. Now, this is like a generation game. Dave, number one ingredient? Electricity. So, we'll generalize that, we'll call it power. Because when you're in Dubai, you could plug it into the wall, but there's a lot of solar power you could use as well. Or if you live near a river, they don't have rivers in Dubai, you could have a turbine in the river that would generate power. So you could power from that, but we'll just call it power. And, oh yeah, second most important ingredient after power. We're making a raspberry pie, we've got power, we're trying to get a Raspberry Pi to work. What would we need? A Raspberry Pi! A raspberry pie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we've got power, pie. The obvious, it's obvious. The obvious things, yeah. So what's the, what's the next obvious thing? A display. A display, so we can actually see if it's working. Now, I've got a little LED on there. We could have lots of displays. We could go and wait for that Kickstarter project to finish and get all of that kind of stuff and plug it in. Or we could use LEDs. Or we could plug it into a projector. Or we could plug it into a screen or a TV. So that's three. <coughs> Actually, an operating system, which may be on an SD card. Fantastic answer there. And our last thing we need. Oh, yeah, input. <laughs> input devices. So it could be a keyboard and a mouse, and there's a whole range of them. Right, okay, kids. Right, we've got boxes there. It's got all that stuff in there. Right, go and get it to work. So they're in a classroom with all these PCs around the outside. And I'm kind of going, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And I said, oh. It wasn't just about to get to work. So I showed him a game on the Raspberry Pi, scratch game, said, right, you gotta get this working, you gotta hack it, and all this kind of stuff. Cool. So they went off, and, and I said, the other thing is, you can ask me for help, but I'm gonna answer every question with a question. So Paul put his hand up. Why is that working? Ah, so I'm gonna answer your question with a question. So what have you tried doing already? Well, try plugging it in. Why are you plugging it in? So, like this, because they just thought I was gonna give them the answer. If I give them the answer, they don't necessarily learn as much. Now, where's sabotage come in? So they've got their Raspberry Pi working. I said, now, this is where we play sabotage. So we've got them all plugged in. I said, now, everybody stand up. So they all stood up. I said, right, move around the room in a clockwise manner and stop and sit down. Now, when you sit down, what other things could stop the Raspberry Pi from working? So they said, uh, if the image card wasn't in, great one. What else? Uh, just no power. And then somebody went, I said, what? Could you, like, um, take the power out the just the tiniest bit so it doesn't actually work anymore? <laughs> I said, yeah, you could do that. Like, oh, yes. You know? <laughs> so I didn't think of as many things as they could do to stop the Raspberry Pi from working. I said, now, you can choose three of those. So now, you're at somebody else's Raspberry Pi. Do three of those things now. Don't tell anybody what they are. Then go back to your place, and you're going to find your Pi has been sabotaged. <gasps> right. A little race, a little competition. Got some prizes. Who's going to be the first ones to get the Raspberry Pi? Oh, scratch, hacked, game, all the rest. 
And they never asked me a question. They just got on with it and did it because they knew exactly what to do. Right, so that's sabotage. You've been listening to me, Alan O'Donoghue, on, or on Twitter, Techno Teacher, T E K N O. Thank you. I'll see you. <laughs> You can get tickets, early bird tickets for £10, but if you just come to me and be really nice, you can have one for free. Okay? Before you. So, bye. Go away. <laughs> <laughs>